My name is Jebediah Kerman. I'm the commander of the 14th Rocket Division, stationed at Kerbal Space Center Logistics Hub on Kerbin. We at the 14th Rocket Division consider ourselves a band of brothers. No matter what happens on the twisting turns of the road we call life, there's always someone who's got your back. That's just as well. Our job is demanding, risky, and dangerous. If you're part of the Rocket Division, you instantly become a minor celebrity, purely because of the fact that the words you speak with an interview with the press could be your last. It wasn't always this way. In fact, in the very early days, the government struggled to see the point of running and maintaining an aviation and aerospace industry. They said it simply wasn't needed, that science and engineering were not a priority, and we should instead focus on the expansion of Kerbal Kind both to the north and the south of the equator. <laughs> to that, me and my buddies from the flight course say, Bullshit. The October, that was a great takeoff there, uh... They're now bound for around 30,000 kilometers, uh, I'll go into the flight. Uh, thanks Mission Control, I've got a good feeling about this one. Damn, Bob, you're really getting on Mission Control's good side. Can we just remember that you're the one who's labeled as the crack pilot here, Jeb? Now who looks like they're in bed with Mission Control? Guys, can we please shut up and just focus on the mission, please? By the sounds of his voice, I think Bill did a lot more than just get into bed with them. Oh, come on, Jeb, it's just a mild case of the cables. It'll be gone in a couple of days. Gone in days, but the scar remains. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> screw you guys. <sighs> All right, we're approaching Max Q. Everybody at our stations, we're approaching the max thrust that this thing can do. What do you mean, Jeb? This this thing can go much faster than this. What are you talking about, Bob? We are under strict orders not to exceed the speed limit outlined in the mission plan. That's final. Nah, screw you, Jeb. I'm not in bed with Mission Control. I'm gonna take this thing to the max. Bob, I am warning you. That's an order. Bob, what are you doing, man? You're crazy. Let's do this. Max throttle engaged. Ah! Warning. Ah! Bob! You listen Warning. to me when I tell you you need to shut that thing down right now! Warning. But Jeb, we're almost Hold there, I can feel it! I said Warning. shut that Hold thing down! With just 100 Warning. meters per Hold second to go! Fine, I'll do it myself! Warning. Engine offline. Thank you, Jeb. What the hell, Jeb? I had that! We'll talk more when we get on the ground! Jeb, what the hell, man? I was 75 meters a second off the world record. Uh, Jeb? Jeb? Are, are you gonna reply? That's Commander to you, Bob. What the hell, man? I've always called you Jeb. Why, why Commander? Because I am your commander, and so therefore you will do exactly as I say. Unlike what just happened up there. Jeb, Commander. Ca commander, you... You know how much I want this speed record. You know I've been craving it for years. Let me make one thing very clear to you, Bob. That aircraft we were flying was experimental. We don't know what could have happened. We could have I been already killed. told you, Jeb. Commander! C Commander! I had it under control, okay? <sighs> You've said it yourself. Who's the most experienced pilot out of the two of us here? Uh... You. Commander. Well done. You're learning. And who handpicked you and Bill to be on my crew? You, Commander. You're goddamn right I did. Now look, I selected you two because you're the best of the bunch in my eyes. And today, you let me down, son. Make sure this doesn't happen again, alright? Yes, Commander. Oh, and you can call me Jeb again now. That Commander stuff is stupid bullshit, I'll say. Aha! Greetings, gentlemen! I'm afraid I bring some bad news. Oh shit, that was guy. Oh, hello, Colonel Kemsworth. How can I help you today? What What's the bad news you bring? Ah, well, you see, it's not all bad news. See, you Yankee Kerbal Nuts are so quick to assume nowadays. Just give me one opportunity, I'll swing him. Trust me, Jeb. Shh, Bill, not this time. Okay, Colonel Kemsworth, what's the good news? Ah, well that last flight of yours got us some brilliant data regarding the aircraft and what it is capable of. We'll be able to use it for millions of different applications on the aircraft's fuselage. Told you we should push it to the max. Shh, Bob. And the bad news? Ah, oh, yes, well, uh, the bad news is you're all out of a job, I'm afraid. What? what? 
Yes, it's all rather sad, isn't it? Unfortunately, due to some budget cuts in the system, we're having to make some... How would you say... Losses in our manned flight department. I'm very sorry. But wait, sir. With all due respect, we're the best pilots you have. Yeah, why don't you lay off Jim Lee from the news department? He never does anything. Shut up, Bob. Anyway, it makes no sense to fire us. Already been done, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry, gentlemen. Uh, nothing personal or anything, but I don't like your suits very much. No, wait, that's it? You're firing us because you don't like our suits? No, no, no. I was just merely making an observation. The real decision was out of my hands, I'm afraid. Uh, oh, wait. It was completely within my hands. A very sorry, gentlemen. Uh, best of luck in your future careers. Doodle Pip. But sir, wait! Ugh. Someone needs to kill that asshole. And so that was it. The job we love was gone. Just why Kensworth would decide to fire his best pilots in the face of budget cuts still baffles me to this day. But hey, what do we know? We're just test pilots. Live meat. Cannon fodder. But despite the dangers, it was a job we all enjoyed doing. Without it, I felt like I had no direction. No drive. <sighs> it's at times like these where you find help from those close to you. Friends, family. But us? Well, we found that help can spring up from the most irregular of places. Hey, Dad. Looks like I let you down. I'm sorry. You know, all I wanted to do was just be, be a test pilot like you, you know, and, uh, and, uh, I, I, I tried, and I was for a while. But I failed you, Dad. I wish I could have been as great as you were when you were alive. Your father was a good man, huh? Jeff. Who, who the hell are you? Ah, tut me light. Uh, I'm someone a lot of people want to impress. Look, buddy, do you mind just saving me the bullshit and getting straight to the point? You would not believe the day I've had, seriously. Oh, I think I would, Jebediah Kerman. Whoa, 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 wait. How do you know my name? And, and how do you know my father? Oh, I know of many things about you and your father, Jeb. My name is Werner von Kerman. I'm, how would you say, a rocket scientist and somewhat of a pioneer. I'm sorry, buddy. None of this rings a bell. You're gonna have to try harder. <laughs> You're just like your father. He was always very skeptical. A good way to be a very good scientist, may I say. How did you know my father? Ah, that is very simple. I designed the aircraft. He flew them. Wait. So yes. you... Yes. I designed the craft your father perished in. Oh my god. You monster. You killed Jebediah. my father! It was not my decision to make. The craft was unfinished. And how is it even fucking flying, asshole? Colonel Kemsworth made the decision to fly the craft, not me. <sighs> to this day, it is still one of the most tragic events that happened to me in my life. It is because of that incident, I resigned from the vehicle testing program. And I started my own. I call it the Kerbal Space Program. Wait, space program? You mean stars and shit? Yeah, uh, precisely stars and shit. In fact, just before your father's death, I was just beginning to research orbital mechanics, the basics that you will need for flying in space. <sighs> this all sounds very interesting, Werferner. It really does, but where do I fit into this? I thought you would know by now. I watched your test flight today. How you recovered, you and your crew, from almost certain death from hypersonic heating. It was quite incredible to watch, it really was. Uh, I would love it if you and your crew came to join us on the space program. We're only a very small operation at the moment, but we have big ambitions. We would like you to become part of those big ambitions with us. Sh sure, sure, I'd love to. I'm sure, I'm sure Bill and Bob would love to as well. Um, what sort of technology are we dealing with here? Well, let's just say 
the funding isn't brilliant. So, basically trash cans full of gunpowder. At the moment, yes. Me and my research team have thought of a little way to earn a little bit of money though. Through world record setting. If we succeed, we will get almost free funds and free publicity. It's quite a concoction. Wait, define world record. Oh, uh, you know, world height record, land speed record, and one of your particular interests, I believe, air speed record? <laughs> Alright, we'll take you up on the offer. Where do we need to go? Just head with your crew to Kerbal Research Center tomorrow morning at dawn. We will begin the tests immediately. Awesome. I'll see you there. Oh, and Werner? Thanks. And I'm sorry about earlier. I, I, I shouldn't have kicked off like that. <laughs> you have a regret like your father too. It's okay, Jeb. The fairest hearts are the ones with the largest desire for exploration. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Well, Dad, looks like I'm not a failure after all. <laughs> I'll see you around. If you somehow managed to sit through those 10 or so minutes of cinematics, then I absolutely applaud you because the voice acting in them was absolutely terrible. And I can only apologise for that because, well, I haven't really done much voice acting before. But guys, welcome to the first episode of Operation Exploration. This series has been such a long time in the making. In this video, I'm basically just going to be completing the first few contracts, basically the world record contracts you get at the start of the um, your career mode series. Basically collecting as much science as possible, doing the usual science dance. And there is a couple of failures, which I'm just going to chalk up to simulation for now, which you'll see in a little bit. So I basically go too high in the atmosphere and build too powerful of a rocket when I haven't unlocked a heat shield, but you'll see that in due course. What I wanted to use this video for was mainly just to outline some parameters of this series and um, just basically talk to you about it because let's face it, the first few missions for Kerbal Space Program, the first few contracts are rather boring, to say the least. I mean, you don't even get to go anywhere exciting. You just land a couple of kilometers away from the, the space center. Sometimes nose down, as you can see here, which is always interesting, but um, we, we flip the right way up after. And so yes, the series. Um, as you probably have seen, or perhaps tried to skip through, um, this is um, a sort of half story based, we complete the first mission. Um, this is a sort of story based, um, Let's Play series, it's semi-scripted, although I, all the gameplay is going to be legitimate, apart from like obviously the quick saving and stuff like that I'll be doing, but aside from that, the gameplay will be completely legitimate. I will be using the revert flight as well, just so you know, because I'm nowhere near as skilled as Kerbal Space Program as, say, Bob Fitch or Scott Manley. Um, the cinematics that will be in each episode, because hopefully there should be cinematics in most episodes, um, they won't be nearly as long as the one in the intro of this series, um, which is probably a good thing, because this one was far too long in my eyes. It took forever for me to film. It took me the best part of four days to make this episode all in all. This is going up on the Saturday. I'm recording this commentary on the Friday. The cinematics filming started on Monday, which was... A long time, to say the least, and um, and yeah, and these do, these episodes do take a very long time to make, and even with a shorter cinematic, the production time will be quite long, meaning that this series probably won't be weekly, even though I want it to be weekly. I think the upload schedule for it is going to be quite irregular, I think is probably the best thing to say. Um, at the moment, I'm thinking maybe bi-weekly is probably the best bet, although I can't promise too much of that either, um, because obviously I have work to contend with, and I also have um, college when I start college in September. I will also have that to contend with, along with driving lessons and, like I say, work as well. I'm going to have to fit all of them in, as well as being able to film this and KSP News on a weekly basis. And here you can see the first failure. We literally just went too fast into the upper atmosphere, and yeah, sure, we survived the actual ascent, and the capsule broke free, but we ended up having an apoapsis of around 210 kilometers. And I initially thought this was a good thing. I got loads of science from this. Um, unfortunately, as you'll see in a couple of seconds, um, yeah, it doesn't go well. We, we we burn up pretty pretty spectacularly, if you ask me. Um, there's a lot of explosions, and uh, yeah, everyone loves a good piece of explosion in uh, Kerbal Space Program. If you can indeed have a piece of an explosion, uh, which I don't think is possible. 
I'm rambling already. You can tell this series is going to be amazing. So you see we flip end over end because of the aerodynamics and many explosions occur. Yeah, I'm going to chalk one up to simulation and I'm going to go back to the VAB and uh, I think there's one more failure. Yes, there's one more failure before we actually um, get a successful flight. Uh, I tried to take a shallower trajectory here, although that didn't work either. That, this was awful, also an awful, awful attempt at, um, at rocket design. It's very, very hard to build actual functioning rocket designs in the early version of Kerbal Space Program uh, career mode, where you don't, where you have such limited parts available to you. Um, I did have liquid fuel engines, it's just for the first few contracts I feel it's better to use solid fuel. Yeah, that decision came to bite me in the ass, even with KSP, um, KSP mods in Spore Store, which speaking of mods, the list of mods will be in the description of this video that I'm using, uh, so you can go download them um, for yourself and, I don't know, carry out your own operation exploration, and see, here's the other failure. Beautiful, beautiful explosions. But yeah, the list of mods will be in the description down below if you want to go and somehow want to create your own cinematics of Operation Exploration and follow your own story. Um, I think that would be quite cool. Um, speaking of the story as well, um, at certain points within the story, as I said, this is a cinematic series for the most part. So at certain points within the story, there are going to be, um, I don't know, character arcs or... Um, Progressions, most of which I haven't actually thought of yet and will probably think of on the fly. I thought of most of this story on the fly, to be fair. I had, I mean, I had a basic idea for a while. Um, but most of this uh, story I've thought up on the fly. A lot of the script I just thought of and then said. Probably why it took quite a long time to make, to be honest. But, um, but that, there you go. I managed to do it in the end. Um, but yeah, um, in at certain points in the story, there will be character arcs that are going to occur or progress, serious progressions in the story. You can see here, I actually broke the chute, which is never a good idea. I'm, I'm, re I'm still getting used to the fact that chutes can actually be broken now. And this, I just went too low. Don't worry, the next one is actually a successful mission. Trust me. I, I, I know what I'm doing, um, despite appearances. But yeah. At certain points within the story, there are going to be character arcs or major progressional points within the story. And for some of those, I'm going to leave it at a bit of a cliffhanger so that one or of two things or one of three things can actually happen. What's going to happen then is you guys are going to be able to vote on what actually happens uh, next in the comment section down below. I will leave like a title screen at the end saying, do you want option A, B or C to happen next? And the option with the most votes will happen in the next um, episode. Obviously, it will be more fleshed out than just the simple question. If I said, do you want this ship to crash or this ship to crash? It literally won't, it won't just be a, um, a single crash and that's the end of the scene and the story progresses unharmed. It will be like a proper cinematic sequence of the ship crashing and everyone screaming and dying and maybe a couple of people surviving. And I will leave some things a little bit unspoiled, but... Um, Will remain, that remains to be seen what exactly I will remain unspoiled and which isn't. But you can see here we had a successful mission, we've recovered the vessel. We're now going to the tech tree to unlock the last few basic parts and I think next episode we'll make orbit. So until then, peace out guys, this is Bradus signing off.